Hey, what's up, folks? This is Pastor Meshach Canyon. And in today's video, uh, rather than doing a devotion, I want to contribute to a, uh, a conversation that's, that's slowly growing about the role of technology uh, in the life of the church. This subject has been on my mind for, for quite some time now, but due to the coronavirus pandemic, uh, the seriousness with which I've been thinking about it has only been increasing. Because like most industries, churches of every kind were forced to rely on technology in ways that many of us simply were not doing before the pandemic hit. Uh, that meant live streaming worship services or, um, or having Bible study and committee meetings on platforms like Zoom. Indeed, it was a pandemic that finally convinced me to start this YouTube channel. Now, admittedly, most people would generally agree that doing things in person is a lot better than doing them online. But the reason I think that this is still an important conversation is because what we're dealing with right now uh, is a technological necessity. Platforms like Zoom weren't really ready to service the entire country. And typically they would grow incrementally until their product was so good that it would take the world by storm, kind of like Facebook did uh, a few short years ago. But the fact of the matter is technology is only gonna keep on improving. And as they develop things like virtual reality, augmented reality, and a mixture of the two, eventually the benefits will outweigh the inconveniences. And once that happens, I think a majority of our ways of interacting are gonna be impacted by these technological advancements, just like it did with smartphones and just like it did and continues to do with social media. There's already big examples of this taking place. One example is the NBA's uh, courtside VR system that they've been testing out that attempts to give the user the perspective one might have if they were watching the game from courtside seats. Now imagine when this technology is perfected and putting on some goggles or a headset makes it feel like you're really at the game. Or to bring it back to the church, this is a picture of the sanctuary at the church I serve, Friendship United Methodist Church. Now imagine when instead of live streaming on Facebook or YouTube, people can throw on goggles and have it sound and look as if you're in your regular seat. Do you think that's gonna impact the amount of people who want to come and participate in person? This is the future. It's coming and the church needs to prepare for its inevitable arrival. And one of the reasons I'm making this video is because the church generally has been awful when it comes to adapting new technology to help us with our mission, especially mainline churches. We're typically the late majority or the laggards on those bell curves that, uh, that marketers use all the time. In fact, uh, earlier today, I was told that the church I currently serve had some controversy a few years before I came regarding whether or not they should install projectors in the sanctuary. Now, perhaps there is a good reason for the dialogue, but the point is that conversation took place long time after schools and businesses and most other industries were using projection technology to help them meet their goal, but the church was lagging behind in that conversation. That's just one example. And I, for one, don't want to see a repeat of that in the next wave of technological innovation. So the way I see it, there's really two main options here. The first one is we can begin a new kind of technological monasticism, whereby we leave the world that's becoming increasingly reliant upon technology. And you know what? This might actually be a necessary and valid option to seriously explore. Because uh, if the goal of Christianity is to become more like Christ, Maybe we'll discover that the new advancements aren't helping to transform people, and we might opt out uh, in a new form of monasticism. And I mean, in all seriousness, the first monastic movement did a, a, a lot of good for the church, and the church wouldn't be what it is today without the contribution of people like St. Anthony of Egypt, St. Benedict, to name a few. So this should be considered. Another option is that we can learn to redeem technology rather than letting it become a tool for wickedness. After all, as uh, Christopher Benick, one of the few voices who've been speaking on this issue uh, for quite some time said, when God created matter, he said it was good. Just because the fall has made some people use matter in ways that are bad, it doesn't make matter bad. So rather than leaving all of these innovations for the evil one to use for his purpose, perhaps the church can lead the way in teaching Christians and the world how to use technology in ways that glorify God and ways that are a blessing to the communities that we live in. Look, the fact of the matter is, the majority of people in the West will opt to live in a world that's reliant upon technology. 
Therefore, I think the second option is closer to the one that we need to start seriously considering right now. And this means serious conversations led by some really smart contemporary theologians. And I do mean the kind of conversations that include uh, the theological richness that was found in some of the early church councils when they were wrestling with some of the issues of their day. Because these are serious uh, issues, therefore they're going to require serious conversations. I was kind of upset at the dismissive conversations that were taking place in some spheres uh, at the beginning of the pandemic um, when some people were scoffing at the notion that uh, some Christians were taking communion online. Because as technology increases, it's going to call into question many of our practices, including our important sacramental practices. And instead of dismissing them, we have to engage them seriously if we're going to continue striving to be a church that lives out Jesus's great commission in an age that looks drastically different than the one in which he first announced the great commission. So we have to be serious and we have to be proactive about this because when movies became popular, if you study uh, history, when movies became popular, Christian leaders denounced them as something inherently evil. So Christian representation in the arts and in entertainment had to play catch up. We haven't done a good job in preparing people on how to have social media without it having them or how to have a smartphone without it having them. And now we're playing catch up as many people are already addicted to the destructive aspects of those technological innovations. So I think the time is, is uh, now to begin peeking around the corner at the technological advancements that are coming and begin asking the important questions and having the conversations about how they'll, lead, how they'll impact the life of the church and how they could help or hinder us in our mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ. Well, like I said, I'm just hoping to contribute to an already growing conversation. I'd love to hear any comments that you have on this subject. So if you've got something to add, please leave it in the comments section below. If anyone's interested in learning more about this subject, I'd refer you to uh, Reverend Dr. Christopher Benick, who I referenced earlier. Uh, he specializes on this and he's been studying it for a lot longer uh, than, I, than I've been. I'll leave his information for you in the uh, description area below. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and thanks for your support. Um, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can be aware of uh, future videos that are being released and share these videos with people if you think that they might have something to contribute or they might be interested. And until next time, peace and goodness, friends.